Welcome, 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 everyone, to the Inebriated Podcast. It's your host, Sam C., and my co-host for the day, Miss Lovely Jillian Ferrari. Hey. How, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? It's another episode. We're here in August, the end of August. It's about what, August 30th? 31st. 30th, 30th, 31st. Or 30th or 31st. We're, we're rolling Labor, off. No, tomorrow's not Labor Day. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right. Well, we almost got Labor Day coming up. Labor Day is the first, right? I don't know. I thought it was Monday. Maybe we just have off because tomorrow's Labor Day. I don't fucking know. I, I don't one, know. Of, one of the other. One of the <laughs> other. But here we are. We're having a new episode. We're multi-streaming on, on both platforms now. I got a better camera set up. I hope you guys love the edited version that I will be putting out this Wednesday. And, you know, we're going to get rocking and rolling. We're going to get rocking and rolling. Um, let's just get right into it. This has been a tremendously interesting week for us. We've had a lot of events going on. We have a lot of, like, not just social events, but, like, global events going on, especially here down in South Florida. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, right now, we have a hurricane going on. Like, not just the Miami Hurricanes that play football. No, no. Okay. We have a real-life hurricane called Hurricane Dorian that's going on right now, right here in South Florida, and it's 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 incredibly interesting. It's incredibly interesting. Mm-hmm. It is a definitely a game changer for those that have never been here or their first time ever being here in South Florida. It it, it it's just it's just an experience you can't really explain. Like even to my people in Chicago, like we get snowstorms, we get, you know, blizzards you you know you're snowed in for four or five days at a time you know you guys have pantries we don't like it's just a different there's a different type of thing so yeah. i don't really know what a pantry is a pantry is a <laughs> like a closet room but for like canned goods or things of that nature things to store food to store away that's what a pantry is so doesn't everybody have a pantry uh not everybody has a pantry like at my mom's house isn't that a pantry that would be considered a pantry, but okay. that could also be considered a closet. Usually, oh, okay, it's a okay. full room oh, de- all right, okay. uh, dedicated to this particular aspect of having an, a, a okay. home or apartment. That you need it for a winter or Right, right, right. Whatever. It's, 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 its sole purpose is really storage, but it, okay. it looks like a walk-in closet almost. Hmm. Well, the ones that I've had, obviously, there's other ones, yeah. but the ones that I've come across, they all usually look like storage hmm. rooms or storage closets. Okay. And um, it definitely brings a different aspect to living here in South Florida because, you know, I'm, I'm not sitting I'm not sitting up here saying, oh, where do you store your food? Obviously, you know, there's the refrigerator, there's cabinets or whatever, yeah. but it's just not in the same way where, you know, especially like between me and you, we endured our previous hurricane about two years ago and yeah. we were out of power for, for seven days, for seven mm-hmm. days completely. Two Septembers ago. During your birthday, actually. During my birthday, I, I my birthday was semi ruined because of it, but it was all right. I, I still hung out with my my buddy Hunter. Hunter, shout out to you, my brother. <laughs> uh, thank you for looking out, man. He gave me a call. He told me, Sam, I don't give a fuck what's going on with you. Mm. I don't give a fuck if you need deep in fucking water in your apartment, my nigga. Pack your shit and come to the crib. Yeah. I was like, you know what, dog? I really fuck with that, man. Yeah, he, was, he was great. You know, and, and this is not a family member. This is a close friend of mine that I, I, I cherish and respect. He is a, uh, a contributing, you know, citizen down here in South Florida, which, you know, can nothing more can be said about this man that other than he's great. He's a great guy, and anybody that's ever known him or met him would also say that as well. For sure, for sure. You know? Yeah. So what I want to get into is... You know, with the aspect of this hurricane, how do you feel about it? How how is it impacting your life right now? Um, it's not. Uh, it didn't really come. Right. So. Well, you know, explain to always, the people like they always hype it up, you know, and make it sound like we're all gonna fucking die and drown, and and you know our houses are gonna collapse on top of us, and put your shutters up. This, that, and the third. Everybody's got plywood. I remember two years ago. I went with my friend to get plywood. It was ridiculously ex- ridiculously expensive for one. We waited for, like, hours to get it. And, I mean, thankfully, we did put it up and use it. We still have it. But they always make it sound like it's going to be horrible. Like, not every hurricane is going to be hur- Hurricane Andrew from 92. Like, right. it's not. You know? And that's what they always hype it up to be. And some people get nervous. Um, some people just drink more. Mm-hmm. That's obviously what we're choosing to do. That's a thing here um, in South Florida. You know, hurricane parties, all the strip clubs, 
hurricane parties. We're planning on going to one tomorrow. Shout out to Tootsies. <laughs> um, but ironically, like, that's our thing. Like, it is. Nobody here gives a fuck. It's like, if we die, you know, I'd rather die at the strip club. Who cares? <laughs> like, that's really how it is. That's it sounds re- funny, but... It's, that's ironically how it is. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I mean, obviously, you know, not every adult goes to the strip club out here, but... No, right, but... To the ones that do, like, it's crazy. Like, literally every club that I can think of off the top of my head has posted up a has made a post about hey hurricane party mm-hmm. we're open on sunday right. we're open on monday we're open on tuesday mm-hmm. we're open on wednesday we're open you know every every week this week you know Bottle it's just specials all the, you know, it's crazy shit, but it's crazy it's 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 a way to make more money that's for sure right, right. i remember two years ago and i probably still have it somewhere on my phone we were at Tootsie's, and they had the Weather Channel on, and it was saying, we're going to get hit, we're going to be fucked, whatever, and we're just, like, drinking at happy hour. And everyone's like, oh, we're just tracking the storm from Tootsie's, it's fine, you know? And, like, it's normal, you know? Like, we were talking earlier about, like, Chicago and the snowstorms and shit, and, like, people aren't going to go out in a snowstorm. You right. just stay home, and you let that go. But here, weather stops nobody. <laughs> stops nobody. And that's, you know... South Florida's got a lot of fucked up shit, but that's one of the ones I appreciate. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Know? And it's crazy, like, you know, after the aftermath of the last hurricane that we endured, me and you, I, you know, I can't even lie, we tried to go to a strip club because they were the only oh things open. Uh-huh. One, I have a good excuse. They were the only things <laughs> open. And two, they were the only things serving food. Yeah. So with that being said, it, it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was quite a ride for us trying to, you know, find out who's serving food like mm-hmm. obviously we had food stored or stored up with in our home or someone in someone that had power but you know that wasn't a convenience that day actually we had to actually store our food with a family that did have power but did not have enough living space yeah. and then we had to go out and find like sleeping space either at a friend's house yeah. or a relative's house thanks to hunter who came through and yeah. my mom the day before and your parents the day but, before like, and ironically fuck. i don't know if this was bad juju or not <laughs> i this is, you know it's funny to say now but during the hurricane you know god god bless that your parents had power for the first two three days and, yeah, but and yeah. and we i was i was resistant i was like hey you know that's weather the storm yeah. well Give it two, three days. You not know, to intrude and shit. You right, know? not to it's intrude. Like, you don't want to bother nobody. They were already over there with their dog, so it's like, you know, it was, they already had a lot going on, so I understood that, you know. Right, and, you know, so you're already taking in one family. Imagine taking in two. It's, it's pretty stressful and pretty strenuous. And ironically, that same night, you know, <laughs> shout out to the Ferrari family, but that same <laughs> night that we show up to stay over, that we finally concede to go over, the power goes out. I swear to God, I cannot make this up. The power goes that out. That was the worst. I, I don't know if I brought the bad juju with me <laughs> of just bad power. I mean, horrible fucking luck. It was just luck. horrible luck. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Ferrari had to go out and, well, not purchase. He already had a generator, but he had to go power up the generator so he could have power in his home. And, you know, it, it, it's just a, a very yeah. gritty time. But ironically, mm-hmm. even with through all its grit, you really see... You, you see the grittiness of South Florida, but then also you see, like, the humanitarian side. Like, yeah. Like, for instance, today we go out to a, a restaurant, and, you know, we're all experiencing the hurricane together. And, you know, obviously, you know, you should open the door for somebody, and the other person should open the door for you as well, whoever gets to the door first. But I don't know. I, 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 I opened the door, and one of the other patrons that was coming in or actually leaving the restaurant that we were at, actually like just gave me a head nod and i confirmed his head nod back with a head nod and it was like we all know that we're in this together yeah like as dangerous as this hurricane could be should have been we knew like hey you all right i'm all right Mm -hmm. all in a head nod and it was just it was a unique feeling to feel especially you know so many people talk shit about south florida and how you know, we, you know, we treat each other poorly and yeah. we're the home of the scammers and this and this and that. But in, mm-hmm. in that moment, from somebody that I did not know, mm-hmm. I felt comfort being a Floridian. Mm-hmm. And this is just my honest opinion. Yeah, no, we come together when, you know, we're when she, when faced she, with possible death. 
you know. But like, it's nice regardless. Of, wait, wait, wait. When she goes, goes down, when, when she yeah, goes down. then we, yeah, we have each other's backs. On any other day, it's like you know, nobody gives every a fuck, man for himself. You know? but right. Whatever. I mean, that's how it is down here. You know, you get used to it. But um, yeah, and even the the bartender said um, when she was talking about, I think the last hurricane. That she went to her fiance's parents' house, whatever. Oh, right, right. And the pool flooded, so it got flooded into the house, whatever. And she was like, and they were in Orlando. And she would, and she said something like, "You really get to know people in a strenuous situation, especially one like that. Like, and if you can deal with each other, you know, because people's worst come out in strenuous situations." For so sure. she was like. I knew they were all right after that. <laughs> like, yeah, that was a hell of a test. Right, but, right, right, yeah, right. You, you, know. you, you start getting some genuine, you know, mm-hmm. some genuine uh, feelings and behaviors out of people when it's a stressful sure. time and everybody's got to band together. You know, people out here for the swimming pools, they got to drain their swimming pools, which I didn't even know was a common practice, but it makes sense because you got it a does. whole pool of water sitting there and it's gonna only add water but i didn't I, you know i'm sitting here not even thinking about that but shout out to a couple of my dogs that got swimming <laughs> pools that had a not empty them out but yeah had a, you know definitely lower the levels you know what i'm saying like i i see that and i was like damn yeah. imagine being a homeowner like it must be so stressful mm-hmm. being a homeowner having yeah. to do and take on these tasks on your own you know what i'm saying god forbid you're on your own but imagine if you were you know shout out to the ones that right. are holding down a whole crib by themselves pool and all maybe you got a tiki hut in the back you know you're trying to live you know a nice little thing going on and a fucking natural disaster comes around yeah and you're like yo what the fuck like i paid for this shit (laughs) everything's threatened at that moment you just hope that it's not going to be as bad as you know they say which thankfully it wasn't right right um it may still come a little bit though i think I yeah, think we, they're supposed to say we're getting, like, the, some the outer bands of it, so it still possibly could be heavy rain because it's still, I think, a Category 4. Mm. But that shit went fucking sideways. Always. <laughs> Always. I mean, thank God. Like, I'm not like, oh, man. Right, 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 right. You know, but, like, it's good. But, like, you know, I was kind of looking forward to maybe, like, an extra day off. But, right, right. And now all the memes on Facebook, everybody was pissed. They're like, damn it, I already have fucking Monday off. Right. <laughs> 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 but it's so true. It's like it God. is. It is, and it, and it's it's shocking to see because, you know, we also have other things that happen in, in this time of a crisis. Like, we have you know gas stations running out of gas. Mm-hmm. You probably never heard of a gas station running out of gas. Well, imagine everybody getting gas at the same time on the same day. That's what South Florida looked like yeah. for. For so I would say yesterday and today. Yeah. So I can't say the last two days, but yesterday yeah. and today. The lines wrapped around the block and wrapped shit. around the block. They look like fucking Popeyes chicken lines. Like oh this my shit God. was ridiculous. And, and then imagine, imagine you got the Popeyes chicken line, you got the fucking gas station line, packed. I mean, wrapped around the block. You 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 can't run away from it. It's literally sitting there in your face. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, what do you do? You know you. You, you know, you don't want to fight with your, your fellow Floridian because it's already stressful on him. He probably yeah. got to, you know, pile up three, four containers of gas for him and his family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, muff, the other motherfucker with a whole truck trying to fill up his gas. Yeah. You know, you don't want to impede, but you're like, man, it goes back to that selfish aspect. It's like, damn, nigga, I need gas too, though. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just need 10 gallons, dog, for the weekend. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. it gets, it starts to get weird. It starts to get weird. So, yeah. You know, we try our best to humble ourselves yeah. and and do what we got to do. But, you know, I don't know. It, it's it's a fine line between every man for his own and being hum- and being just humble, yeah, you know, right, being right. humble. And I just I, I just love and hate that it comes to that only in a time of crisis and mm-hmm. disaster. Right. You know, I wish it was really all year round right. that, you know, another motherfucker hold the door for you, man. Say thank you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, y'all ladies too. Motherfucker open the door for you. Say thank you, man. Just, yeah. you know, especially in the time right now, just because you got a vagina between your legs mm-hmm. do, does not mean that you demand respect. Or no, sure. hold on. Let me, let me rephrase that. That's does true. that mean that you have earned respect? You should right. demand respect, but it doesn't mean you earn respect. Right, so right. I just wanted to clarify that yeah. real quick. A lot of people don't do that, you know, and I hold door for, doors for people all the time, women, men anybody you know but and i notice that most people don't say thank you so it's like when they do i'm like oh my god this 
slightly restored my faith in humanity right. because this one's not a douche. Right. You know, like the last ten were, but this one kind of <laughs> covered it up for them. You right, know? right, right, right. But especially like I okay, if you want to say like the T word, we've we've not. I'm trying to coin the phrase. It's called GMO pussy. So <laughs> you can say, you know, for guys, ladies, and GMO <laughs> pussies. That that's <laughs> that I think is should be a turn of phrase that should be acceptable in the tea community, and we're gonna get into that a little bit later because there's some definitely things happening in the in the comedy era and the comedy community that I think should be discussed, yeah. and we're gonna get into it. But just to close off with the hurricane situation, it is you know it was a natural disaster that was avoided. Thank God. You know, bless, bless God or bless the Santerias, whoever did their job this week. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. But it's, it's, definitely, um, it's definitely avoided down here in South Florida. But since it's he- heading up north, you know, God, God and bless to the people in Orlando. God and bless to the people in Tallahassee, yeah. Gainesville, you know, all up the East Coast. They say it's going to hit North or South Carolina. God bless to y'all, man. Mm-hmm. You know, flooding could probably be a major causality of that of that area, that region. Yeah. You know, yeah. just y'all y'all get prepared. You know, we got prepared. We stacked up on water. These gas stations and these WalMarts made a fucking fortune mm-hmm. in two days. But you know, fuck mm-hmm. it. We had to do what we had to do. Yeah, so I hope sure. you guys do what you got to do. Stay safe, and you know. You know, keep keep partying, shit. Yeah, <laughs> there's enough. never a bad time to party. You know what I'm saying? True. Even even if I would say even if there's a funeral, bro. If I had a funeral tomorrow, I honestly would say like, uh, don't mourn, don't cry. I ain't gonna say I was in a better place because this shit's pretty fun up here. <laughs> but I'm gonna say that you know, go party, man. Go rock it out. You feel me? Go talk about the good times. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And I hope I hope no. No lives are taken during this disaster time, and mm-hmm. you know, just just bless to everybody that's out there enduring. Yeah, and true. you have anything on on Dorian? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, we're still alive. We're still fucking hot. Still sunny. Right. Still sweating. <laughs> And good luck to everybody else, because we dodged this one again. Our life's going to run out one of these days, but we're good for now. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't say it. I know, but like, let's be fucking real at the same time. I forgot wh- but for now, we're okay. I forgot <laughs> what the, the anniversary is now. I think it's 26 years since Andrew, or 27 yeah. years since Andrew. No, t- it, 26, because my mom was pregnant with me during Andrew. Okay, so. so 26 years. About. So it's been, a, it's been a while since Andrew, bro. So we've, we've, been on a good, we've been on a good stroll. You know, we had power, power loss. The last two, the last one, two years ago, two yeah. years ago, and you know, hopefully we don't get shit. You know, not even some turbulence in this motherfucker. All right. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hope for. That's we're honestly good. what and I we hope for. We have a lot of fucking water. So right, yeah. right, 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 right. We we'll be drowning up. in the water, not the rain. <laughs> 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 for real. Facts, facts. <sighs> and on to um, what I was talking about earlier with comedy, man. It's a, it's a very interesting time for comedy, man. Very interesting time. And actually, I want to start off by giving a shout out to a platform that is up and coming. We just ran into these guys, what was it, Thursday? Thursday night, Thursday Thursday evening at the Miami Improv. Shout out to Uproar Comedy. Yes. Hosted by Nick. I did not get your last name, my bad. (laughs) But he is the host of Uproar Comedy every Thursday. This is a free promo for you, big dog, because you guys guys came out, you guys rocked out, Mm -hmm. and I love what you guys are doing for comedy because... You know, I, I I didn't grow up in an era where there was a big comedy scene here in South Florida. You know, I don't know if you did or if you've been to many comedy shows, but it's usually on a higher tier. It's not really a localized thing. Yeah, right, right. Like, I can imagine a karaoke, which we, we shot, we did a karaoke episode. Go back and check that out. <laughs> but we, I, I've never known that of there to be a big outcome with comedy. Like, I don't know any any famous comedians from Miami at all. Just I might I might not be giving them the 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 flowers that they need right now, but I personally don't know any yeah. that come out of Miami. Oh, there's oh well, and and then Ricky Smiley. Shout out to Ricky Smiley. You know he he does rep for for the crib, but he's not really from here. He's from Atlanta. But I'll I'll give him you know what I'm saying some props, some kudos. Shout out to you, Ricky Smiley. But back to comedy. Uproar Comedy, down at the Miami Improv, every Thursday. Every Thursday. Go check it out. 
Go online, go to eventbrite.com, check, look up Uproar Comedy. You're gonna be looking for Nick. He's right there on the cover. He's mm-hmm. gonna have a, he's gonna have a bunch of guest comedians coming out. Yeah. This last Thursday they had comedian JJ. They had John Reed. They had uh, Burger. Shout oh, out to you, fun, Burger. Um, they had um, Keyshawn. They had yeah. and, Pam. and Pam. That was their and lineup. Pam. So shout out to yeah. them. Shout out to all those guys. They definitely put on a, a, a hell of a performance. Yeah, they did. You know, I, I don't know if they're considered amateur comedians, but I would consider them amateur comedians, but they did great. Mm-hmm. I laughed. I cackled. I almost spilled my drink on myself. They had the room rocking. It was completely worth the experience, so go check it out yeah. at Miami Improv. It's not a plug for Miami Improv. This is a plug for Uproar Comedy. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I hope, I very much hope to be interviewing one of their comedians very mm-hmm. soon we're we're in talks right now and i hope you guys look forward to it we'll be having a pro semi-pro comedian come on and give his give his opinion on his lifestyle what it yeah. is, what it takes to be a comedian so yeah. i'm looking forward to it like i said shout out Keyshawn, shout out john Reed, shout out comedian jj shout out pam shout out burger you know this, uh, shout out nick as the host man y'all did great man y'all yeah, did great they did and how how only you? the second week? Right. He said that too. It's only our second week, whatever. Like I think it's great that he's starting this and you know, it's a way to he's helping so many people get out there and, you know, be able to, you know, chase this comedy dream that they have and, you know, hopefully one day make it. It's a hard industry to make it in, of course, but um, you know, with this platform it's great and you know, we we are in Miami, you know, it's not like some middle of nowhere type shit, you know, it's like people I think get more exposure here because there's so many people and you know a free a free show it's free you, know, you, you just have to buy two drinks whatever and they're expensive but it's not their problem right, right, <laughs> um, right, right, right. yeah no i mean it's free and we saw five people they were all funny it was about two hours so it was it was a good two hours it was great and they were they were all um different in their own ways but similar to i liked um certain topics that they of course touched on but didn't touch on um I liked that they didn't go political. Um, in this climate that we are it, right now. Yeah, in, in this, I mean, I can't speak for the next five or the next five or the next five that they have over there. But this five, I have to say, I really enjoyed that they didn't go political. They didn't go um, racial. Any of these, you know, hot topics that, you know, it's very, um, it's very touchy these days to say really either of those two things. These are the, you know, two hottest topics right now. But, um you know, I really, I really enjoyed that they didn't touch on that. They really, all their comedy was for everybody. Like, right. no matter what demographic, what age, what anything, no matter who you are, you could like it. You right, know, right, it, right. it was, it was shit that was funny to everybody. Um, and I hope that they do continue with that because I think that that, in my opinion, you know, others might feel differently, but I think now too many people are touching on the racial and political thing, and it's getting old. Like, it's, it's obnoxious already. It's run you know? its course. It's At first, its, it's like, okay, you know, haha, whatever. Like, when Trump first got elected, it was like, oh, boom. Right, right. Fucking took off with that right. shit. But it's like now, like... Burn Cheeto. Yeah, but like now, like, yeah. you know, chill the fuck out. You know, like, we're over it already. Like, now let's be... They don't realize that it's more likely to divide people than bring people together because they're True. such debatable topics, you know, that I think, you know, this... In this time, we need to be worrying about bringing each other together rather than just speaking on what divides us, you know? Right. And um, and I definitely do uh, think that it's great that they didn't do that. And I it, w- it gave me a reason, amongst other reasons, of course, to look forward to going back and, you know, seeing the next five and the next five, you know, because it's, a, it's great for their exposure. It's fun. You know, it's like a cool... You know, date night thing. Oh, you got nothing to do on a Thursday, or you know, whatever. You tell your friends about it. You know, everybody's into comedy these For days. For sure. So it's it's great, you know, to get out there, and it's 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 fun. It was a fun experience, so I would definitely go back again for sure okay and hope to see them on you know netflix and whatever for sure. else oh like, my god know, i wish i making it these days you know so espe- they all deserve it especially being from the crib like three performers were from homestead uh one performer was from jacksonville or tallahassee i know he was from the he yeah was from he up lives north. in jacksonville but i don't know if he's from there he just li- he may just live there he might be from i don't know i don't know but he lives in jacksonville now right 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 yeah. right and you know, it, it did give me a, a heartwarming feel 
that these guys can definitely take comedy somewhere that it's probably never been to. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm really appreciative of. For sure. You know, that that comedy is getting is getting a second chance. That comedy is getting that that lane that it needs to be in, really. Yeah. You know. And you know, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that because definitely. you know, there's just you know, we're great at football, we're great at basketball, we're great at these other things, but you know, why not be great at more? Especially it being a multicultural platform, you know. Yeah. There there's a lot of stigma with comedy and comedians that a lot of people don't really understand. I'm not in the comedy realm, but I understand it, that there's an aspect of what they call white rooms or mm. black rooms, which really pertain to the audience or the demographic of people that come out to see you. But when they, you know, when they say, oh, you're a great crossover comedian, that means you can play both rooms. Yeah. You know, it, it, it does show that it's kind of fucked up because it's like, why can't I rock? A white room like I rock a black room or why can't I rock a diverse crowd of a room which I'm gonna get get into another comedian that has a real diverse crowd but it just shows like we're still at somewhat of a divide when it comes to our comedy and comes to our comedians maybe because it is political or maybe because you know there is some derogatory terms used in their comedy but I would like to see more comedians you know everywhere but all, but really just South Florida yeah. come with you know, some material that can definitely take them to the next level. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. You know, and the person that I'm discussing right now with, you know, I, I hope to be in very contact with him soon. Mm -hmm. Again, about, you know, having the interview. Shout out to you, Keyshawn. You know, if comedian JJ hits me back or comedian Nick hits me back, you know, y'all definitely have a platform here at the, at the Inebriated Podcast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll, we'll get it rocking. We'll get it rocking. Yeah, you for know? sure. Who who would you say was your favorite uh, performer? Mm. Okay, oh, maybe man. not favorite, but the more the one you felt was like held my attention the held best. your attention the best. Boom. Doesn't gotta be your favorite because they were know. all pretty good. They were I all think pretty they, good. Yeah, I think they were all good, but I think honestly, I would have to say the fucking host Nick to okay. me was was. The funniest, it seemed the most natural to him. Right. Like, he seemed like, like, he tried the least right. out of all of them. You know, okay. it's like, you could see, like... Laid back. Yes, it came, like, it came, not, not like, didn't try, but, like, it came the most natural to him, I think, out of all of them, you know? But, um, I don't know, I, I would have to say Nick, and then probably out of, like, you know, not including the host, um, I would have to say probably... I like JJ. Okay. He was like, I'm not really big into like animated comedy. Like, I don't want you to just stand there and fucking not move. But right. like, you, do, you don't have to be like doing cartwheels on the stage, you know, like that's a little much. Right. But um, I think he was like just in that like perfect realm of like, it's animated where it's making it more interactive with the audience, but it's not like too over the top. Like, right. so I think he had a good, um, a good ratio of Above. animation versus, you know, just being normal whatever right right um and yeah i think i think what he the the shit that he was talking about was just hilarious and it was funny to everybody right right you know um and and that's what i that's definitely what i liked about it nick was i mean nick was just fucking hilarious like i can't wait to see more of him he was so fucking funny yeah no for sure <laughs> and especially like he he spoke about something i can't say verbatim but he spoke about like like he only drinks Hennessy and he only <laughs> and he's so bad at Hennessy like he'll drink it from the straw and like he didn't have a Hennessy glass or Hennessy cup with him but towards the end of the night <laughs> that motherfucker brought a, a whole bottle of Hennessy with just a straw in with it with just a straw in it. and I was like alright you you straight up to your word yeah, you, you, you keeping you, it 100 yeah you fucking said it now you showed it to us right right and I, and I appreciated the, the, the realist the realism in uh -huh. that and you know, I, I like you said. I hope to see these guys more. You know, for sure. For I sure. would. I would have to say it was. A, it was. It was a triple way tie. It was a tie between Burger, JJ, and Keyshawn, because they okay. had they had a variety of styles. Definitely, JJ took it hands down. He had the most variety of styles. He was yeah. doing. He was doing crowd work. <laughs> he was doing. You know in-depth stories he was doing spitfire comedy where it's just bang 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 yeah. bang bang you know and sometimes you know you got to be like that because you don't know what kind of audience you're walking into you could be walking into a, a white room like i said a black room or you know a multicultural diverse room you know you could be walking into anything and 
he was, I think, the most adaptable to his surroundings. Um, yeah. I would have to give Keyshawn, he definitely gave the storyline comedy that is the styles of like a, a Louis C.K. or a Jerry Seinfeld where he, he's, he's going to baby walk, he's gonna take you baby steps and walk you into the story mm-hmm. and give you the comedy along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Which I like. And then Burger, I felt like Burger gave uh, I don't give a fuck attitude. He which was is like hysterical. Yeah, he, was, he had a very Bill Burr style. It wasn't raunchy like Bill Burr, like fuck y'all, I don't give a fuck. But it was very like, <laughs> you know... I'm, my name is Burger. I'm fat. Fuck y'all. I can say it, y'all can't. Type of attitude, <laughs> which w- which worked for him. It, yeah, it completely it did. worked. It did. You know, it wasn't like glossy, like not glossy, like a bad thing. Glossy because like it just it's shined over. What like Gabriel Iglesias? Like I think he just shines over his fatness or or yeah. overweightness, obeseness, whatever. Right. I think Burger took it and said, "I'm fat. Fuck y'all," and I'm gonna say some fat jokes. And I think, I think he, so I think he had the strongest joke. Oh, yeah, I honest, I totally agree on that. Yeah, he yeah. had the strongest joke, and I can't, again, I can't verbatim it. It was something about he was sprawled out on the couch, and his daughter walked in and said he was slimy. Bro, <laughs> I fucking lost it. I completely lost it. I just, I completely lost myself oh my in God. that realm. With that joke, I you know if I could fucking throw my hands back and spill my drink, I would have. But he said it so naturally too. And like 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 if she said it, like if she said it, and Back I was just, room. Dad, why are you slimy? Right. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Imagine getting called slimy. Right. Oh my god, that's like saying especially from your child. That's like saying moist for some people. <laughs> Kids are such assholes. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. But um, I <laughs> they think, don't know to give a fuck. They're like drunk adults. Right. Right. You know, just word vomit mm-hmm. you know but that's that's what makes it funny and he really did capitalize on that you know and and i think all of his jokes hit i mean they didn't have that long each of course because it wasn't just like one or two the whole two hours you know it was right. it was five people so they didn't i think they would have all been able to go longer because you know you could tell that like they weren't really done but like they knew they had to cut it right you know but they were all they were all hilarious like i wish i could see them all on, like, an individual thing where it's, like, they don't just have 10 minutes. Like, right, I want right, to see, right. like, 30 minutes of each one, you know? Right, right, right. Oh, for sure. And I think they'll kill it. Mm-hmm. I for sure think they'll kill it. For sure. You know? Like, any any one of them could easily take a 30-minute special, tape it, you know? I don't know if they'll sell it to anybody, but they could definitely put it on a platform. Oh, yeah. And, you know, get some traction in the, in the social awareness media aspect. And yeah, you gotta get exposure somehow. Right, you know? right. You, it's, it takes baby steps, you know, and, and especially in this climate, you know, you don't have to do the traditional grind of going to a club, asking the manager or the host, "Hey, can I get on? Can I get five minutes?" Yeah. Like now, you could really create your own your own lane. Like that's really, uh, you know, I'm, I don't find myself to be a comedian, but I'm saying I'm using that same. Uh, Pl- uh, how can yeah, I say like platform kind of platform uh, or like um, format format there we go I'm using that I'm using the format of saying hey I don't need a fucking uh, a television host to tell me hey you're gonna be my you're gonna be my assistant and then you're gonna take the show when I'm done yeah. I don't need to wait on you anymore I can go and create my own content I can go and create my own variety show or shows you know I can go, I can go and create even my own movies, you know. I'm actually thinking about creating my own movie soon, so stay tuned. Check out for Inebriated mm-hmm. Media. It's gonna be official. It's gonna be <laughs> official, right. and it's all gonna be based on true stories because I think those are the stories that need to be most talked to or inspired by true stories. Yeah. Either based on true stories or inspired by true stories. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. but back to comedy. Back to comedy. We have another comedic. You know, situation going on right now where we got Mr. Dave Chappelle. Mr. Dave Chappelle's out here, you know, giving it his all with his new special, Sticks and Stones. But I'm going to also interject that Andrew Schultz also dropped a comedy special that I, I completely forgot the, the title, but he, it's it's uh, crowd work. It's, it's called crowd work, but it's, it has something else to do. But he dropped the comedy special, and I can't lie, babe. I can't lie. 
even though Dave gave us an hour, I think Andrew's sharpness of 30 minutes takes the cake on this one. In my opinion. But I, I definitely want your opinion because we both watched it together. What, what's, what's your view on it? I don't know. It's hard to say because I think, I mean, and I, Andrew's fucking hilarious always. Like, I, I, I don't know. I just love him. But um, it's kind of different. He Andrew, at least on this one and the ones that I have seen of his, obviously I haven't seen all of his, but I haven't seen all of Dave Chappelle's either. Um, he's better with interacting with the audience than Dave is, you know, um, which I like, you know, like at the comedy special, I'm like, we're sitting in the front, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, talk to me, (laughs) you know? Rip me a new one. (laughs) Say something. Um, But, yeah, I think, I think on this one, I probably agree that probably Andrew's was better than Dave's, and just out of these two in particular, um, oh yeah, yeah. Not out, not out of the grandeur yeah, of overall, content. I absolutely love Dave Chappelle. I think he's hilarious. Like, Hands if I had down. To watch any comedian, he would be definitely in like my top. I don't want to say five. Well, okay. Five is I a lot. I was gonna say like top four, but no, I'll put like I can probably throw one more person. Right, in. right, right. Um, yeah, he would definitely be in my top five. Um, and and this one, I mean, I was. I was laughing the entire hour, you know? Like, I really think that he is hilarious. But, yeah, it's not... This one wasn't his best, I don't think. Um, although it was still great, it, it wasn't his best. Um, and Andrews, I think I have to say that this might be my favorite of Andrews. Oh, for sure. You know, so I feel like I'm already biased, like, because Andrews best, Dave's, like, not best. So it's like, right, I right. gotta pick Andrew on this one, so I do agree. But I think overall... Um, I don't know. They give each other like a good run for their money, but I think overall Dave is better. But oh, for sure, um, for sure. Overall, I mean, Dave. Dave is a goat. You know, there, yeah. there's there's no concising that. There's no taking that away. Dave's a goat. Yeah. You know, Andrew's just you know picking up on his comeuppance. But hey, shout yeah, out to he's you, so Andrew. Young still, you know? I'm a fan. We we came to your show. Yeah. Not only do we came to your show, I watch your podcast. Like, yeah. I'm not even dick writing, bro. I'm really giving you no, your he's flowers, a huge bro. Fucking fan. Yeah, I'm giving you your flowers, huge bro. Fan, but sure. I'm just saying on this one, and I and I could see what Dave was doing. You know, it's called <laughs> the the special is called Sticks and Stones. So I understand, like after watching the special, I didn't understand before I watched the special. I understand after I watched the special, I was like, okay, I understand. You're gonna start saying some shit that's not gonna appease everybody. That's what I liked about it. Right, right, right. Which is cool, but like, I'm glad you went that route, Dave, because you should be able to say whatever the fuck you want mm. and whatever the fuck you want to say to motherfucker. But I just don't think it was that funny. And if you can, you know, re- not uh, damn. If you can, you know, come with a. Uh, uh, rebuttal. Uh, a rebuttal. There we go. I kept saying retraction in my head. <laughs> if you could come with a rebuttal that you know denounces that, then give it to me. You know, cause you love the special. I sat with you and you loved it, and I loved <laughs> I it too. Dying. Listen, I laughed cause some shit is just funny. <laughs> like, like Dave had a great LGBT joke, LGBTQ joke. Let me just yeah, leave it at that for the people that on. that the people that didn't see it. Let me just leave it at that. Everybody watch it though. It's fucking. Hilarious. Everybody watch it. See, and that's the thing. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not shunning Dave for what he did. I actually love what he did. Right. I just don't think it was his best work. Now his previous works with with Netflix, I think took the cake hands down. Even all three of them, the one he sold already, and then the two he did. But on this on this new one, I don't think he brought the funny as much as he could have. I think he yeah. was more going for the topic of discussion, yeah. the the sensitivity aspect. I he agree. wanted to break that boundary of sensitivity, and if people found it funny, he said, fuck it. I don't give a fuck if you find it funny. I'm funny regardless, motherfucker. And I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah, I'll give yeah. him that. Right. I'll give him that because he is great. He is great, you know? And I, I definitely want your insight on it, you know? Andrew versus... It shouldn't be Andrew versus... Dave, but I'm going to put it right now into the atmosphere. Andrew yeah. versus Dave, what did you think? Um, I agree with what you said about the topics with Dave because clearly that was his like main thing more than 
making a joke out of everything. It was to get get people talking about a topic, and I liked how like politically incorrect he was. Like mm-hmm. I fucking live for that shit. I think this fucking sensitivity is so beyond obnoxious already. And um, so that's part of why I liked it so much because he said fuck everybody who's you know got to stick up their ass for you know can't say this, can't say that. Oh my god, I hurt my feelings. For sure. Like, he didn't give a fuck. And like that's what I liked so much about it. I think like if I could pick any reason why I liked it so much, that probably would be not my number one is. Because he was so politically incorrect. Um, but um, Andrew usually is, too, as far as, like, what I've seen of his. And this one, he didn't really touch so much on shit like that. And I think that's why I liked it. Um, it was more audience interaction and just, like, talking about, like, ridiculous shit. Right. And just um, rifting. It was very different from the one that we went to see. Oh, for and sure. And honestly, I have to say, I would have really liked to see this one in person more like by a landslide than the other one that we actually did see this one i think was a lot funnier than the one that we went to see the one we went to see was very um uh i don't really care for when they touch on only one topic the majority of the time and the one we went to see was very like very sexual okay which sexual comedy is is funny it is but i i I don't care for it to be spoken you know excessively right right right. you know it's like all right change the fucking topic like not everything has to be dirty um, but that's why I'm saying I think this one of Andrew's was the best because it was the most, like, I think versatile for his kind of comedy. You know, he didn't just stick to one topic. He really bounced around right. to different things. And, you know, um, the audience's feedback had him talking about different shit. Like, you could tell. I mean, I could totally be wrong. I'm not a fucking specialist. But, like, to me, a lot of it seemed improv because it was audience interaction. And then that turned into a whole topic. So it's like. You don't know what the audience is going to be talking about. Right. Like, before you get on stage. Like, you can't write that, you know? So, I think that showed, um, you know, natural comedy ability. Um, and Dave's wasn't so um, based on audience interaction. He really had a set and he stuck to it. Right. He so, had something to say. Yeah. Andrew had more, I'm going I'm to rip the, the crowd until I can't rip them no more. Right, right, right. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, right. we're just going to talk shit and, you know, laugh and whatever. And he laughs at his own jokes, which I think is hysterical. <laughs> that makes me laugh more. Right. Like, if you think you're, like, it's we like know a- you're funny, but, like, you're actually laughing at what you're talking about. Like, that makes me laugh. Let's take a shot for that. My bad. She's probably been holding this shot for, like, ten minutes. I know. <laughs> it was getting hot because my hands, so I put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Salud. Cheers. But um, all right. So, so with Andrew, you felt like him going in the crowd took more skill than what Dave concisely yeah. wrote down, put down, mm-hmm. and said. Because you can't script that beforehand, right? At all, you don't know who's in the crowd. You know, yeah, that's the thing. Like, and if you can't make shit up off the top of your head based on some ridiculous crap somebody in the audience said. Are you really that good at comedy? Are you just really good at thinking about it a lot beforehand and making sure you write it down? Right. You know? And that's what I didn't so much care for about about Dave's. It was very, like, like staying on topic. You know, like, somebody's phone rang. He ripped a little bit. That? He did. He did. Yeah. But then he was like, like I was saying, and right. then got right back on topic. And, right. like, okay, that was funny because it's, like, a little jab, like, you threw me off now, motherfucker. Turn your phone off. Right, you know? right, 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 right. But, like, it was... I felt like he could have done a little bit more um And improv. ripped into him, yeah. Then he did, which Andrew, he fucking capitalizes on that shit because he's really quick on his feet. Right. Um. So that's what I like so much about his. And that's why I would love to go see him again live. Oh, and, for like, sure. I want him to rip me a new asshole so badly because, like, I just want, like... I just want to be that audience member that gets just fucking, like, roasted, you know? Right, like, right. I want... I, Talk shit about me. Like, <laughs> you know, like, and that's something. funny. That's that's funny and that's interesting, especially, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh my God, don't even look my way. Just Silly. stay. Yeah, just stay like, over no, there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's interesting that you're yeah. like, 
come give it to me, <laughs> motherfucker. Give me the jokes. I really thought because we sat so close on Thursday yeah, yeah. that, like, they were going to say more shit, like, to us, you know? He gave me a little shit. JJ gave me a little shit. He was like, you definitely buy it. And shout out to JJ. He was <laughs> funny, though. He was like, oh, yeah, you got a white girl? Yeah, you definitely buy your Netflix account. Like, it was funny shit. And I and I cackled. <laughs> I laughed. You know, I fucking almost spilled my drink. <sighs> it was funny. You know, and... <laughs> I know who's in a relationship. Right, right, right. And we're like, you put your hand up, I looked at you, and then I, like, I... Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know, like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm put on the spot. Are we interacting? Right. Like, if you interact, I'll interact. Wait, wait, are we ready now? <laughs> Is the show going? And he was like, you looked over at her like, bitch, if you don't put your fucking hand <laughs> And that was hilarious. Right, I'm right. Like, as soon as she said that, I'm like, oh, my God, give me more. We're in. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you notice me? You know, like, fucking talk to me. That's Make what's me up. feel like shit. You know, like, say something. No, that's what's up. That's what's up. <sighs> but it was, it was great. And I, that would be, like, my one... Me personally, other people obviously like really don't want to be fucking seen or talked about or any of that. Right. But like my advice to comedians, not like I'm fucking anybody to give any professional advice, but like be more interactive with the audience because like sometimes like we really want that. You right. know, like fucking I hope next time we go that like we're talked to more. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Honestly, you know. For sure. And and, and I know like we had a little weather issue, like it literally poured down before we got inside. If we didn't get us, there was an awning over. Yeah, thank you. But you know, it was it's kind of stressful sitting out there waiting for these performers yeah, to sure. arrive or to get ready to go back on stage and yeah. And that was definitely reflected in the amount of people who showed up too. You know, I think if the weather didn't play a factor, more people would have came. Oh, for sure. You know, but it was still a good turnout. They had two shows. I would I would average it about probably. In total, like, 90 people. Are you sure it was them that was before? Because yeah, for sure. why didn't we see anything well, be- well, about Well, because that? they might do... Like, a- why did it only say 10.30 and not say, oh, also 8 or 8.30? Like, why the fuck didn't we see any advertisement on the early one? Well, because a good way to do it is friends and family. And we did see, like, that somebody did bring in their family for the show. Oh, okay. So they probably got free tickets. Whereas our mm-hmm. show, some people paid for it. We didn't. Wink, wink. And... But, hey, I still contributed. I still bought... Did we fucking ever? More than my two drink minimum. I brought like five of the motherfuckers at twenty dollars a piece. Y'all motherfuckers are thieves, but I still <laughs> I, that's how I pay the performers. I'm yeah. not you know, they they take a cut of the door or the drinks and that's yeah. how everybody gets paid. So yeah. I did my due diligence, big dog. I did my part. And if for you're not sure. getting part of the bar, you need to renegotiate my nigga. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But but back to but back to Dave and I wanna and I wanna clear this up real quick because we gotta we're in our last probably 10, 15 minutes. I want to get to Dave. And Dave, I love you, man. I'm, I'm a fan, bro. I've been a fan since forever. Yeah. And I think his work is great. I just don't think this was his best work. I no. know and see what you were going for. You're taking a, I wouldn't say political stand, mm-hmm. but you're taking a stand versus, I guess you would say, PC culture. You mm-hmm. you're taking a stand against, you know, people trying to censor what you say, right. censor what, you know, comes out of your mouth. And I completely and I am thankfully grateful for you doing that. You know, mm-hmm. he he said the F word, which I'm not gonna say because I'm not a fucking millionaire right now. <laughs> and I'm just glad he had the platform to say it and explain why he has come back into the industry and feels like he has a platform to say it. Yeah. Because before, it obviously crippled his career. You know, he had one of the funniest sketch shows in history. In history. Yeah. He had, you know, complete success off of it. And to be taken down by what you say and what you do, I think is a problem because that's what we fought for for the parental advisory rights, you know, for the freedom of speech rights. Like, it's it's just, it shouldn't be censored if you know you're going to an uncensored, unfiltered show. It shouldn't yeah. be that way. Yeah. You know? I agree. You know, more than one person has fought for these rights, you know, and people that unbeknownst to you have fought for these rights, unbeknownst yeah. to me, have fought for these rights. Like, I literally watched, I think it was a 30 for 30 or some shit, that even Motley Crue and bands like that fought for these rights. But really, it's shout out to Uncle Luke. 
from the crib, from down here in Miami. Shout out to you, big dog. But you know these these artists and these performers and these figures in history. You know the big MLK have all fought for the freedom of speech. Have all fought for that right. And yes, freedom of speech can be taken in many ways. Yeah, motherfuckers that use it. So they can't use it no more. But we got to take it and be like, hey, if this is for entertainment purposes, yeah. you know what you're walking into. You right. know what type of show you're walking into. Mm-hmm. You know the performer mm-hmm. you're walking into. Now, if he's spinning 180, like Dave kind of Dave kind of went 90 degrees. Like he went he went a little a little left or a little right. Not politically. Just literally <laughs> yeah. he went a little bit away from where he yeah. usually go. Right. But to see that he has the ability to do that in a safe environment where his life is not endangered, right. I am completely for. I agree. I agree. I am completely for because nobody's life should be threatened for what they say. They should only be, not threatened, but they should only be accountable for the things they say pertaining to the things that they are willing to do or do. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, if you, if, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not trying to get political real quick. I'm just trying to make it a point to say, hey, if you out here screaming, you know, F, like, fuck Fs or fuck Gs or fuck Ls or fuck Bs and Ts, like, and you go out and turn your words into actions, not just, you know, not it, it doesn't even have to be physical, just but, like, even protesting to where these people are being... Uh, like they can't even receive the same rights that we got, then I can see a problem with it. But as long as everybody's on the same playing field, we good. We good. Yeah. You and know? realize that it's comedy. Right. You know, like... It's a joke. There should be... it. There's no such thing, in my opinion, as politically correct humor. There's got to be a little fucking raunchy shit in there. There's got to be something that, um, you know... People won't agree with. There's got to be something in it to make it gritty, which makes it funny. And no, not everything has to be derogatory. I don't want to hear fuck shit, bitch, the entire special. Cause right, that's obnoxious. for an hour. But but you can you can get a point, and like he did, you can get a point across and make jokes about it, you know, it, it, lightheartedly. Right. You know, like not everything has to be taken literally, you know, like... He made jokes about the LGBT. That doesn't mean he fucking hates them. Right, He's at all. He's a comedian. Like, right. get over yourself. Right, right. You know? And that's the whole basis of comedy, you know? And that's why I'd be fucking shitting bricks if I was a comedian these days. Because he can't just say shit. Right. And he will catch a lot of backlash for this special. Which is fine. percent But I respect him so much because he doesn't care. Right. He's like, I'm going to do it anyway. You don't fucking like it? Don't he watch said it. that. He was like... You don't like it, you you know where you know who you came to see. Right. Exactly. So right. be fucking ready for the ridiculous crap that's gonna come out of his mouth because you should know his type of comedy. Right. And you bought the tickets. Right. You were you his bought the tickets is something you don't know about? What kind of moron are you? You were his bottom line. <laughs> like like bruh, you you were there to contribute uh, to this man's cause. Don't bitch now because you know you got, you know, a stick up your ass. Right. Don't go. Don't watch it. Right. Don't you know, he, that, oh, that's what he said. He said, and for all you um, on, on Netflix right now watching at home, you clicked on my face. Right. True. You knew what it was. Right. You knew what it was when you showed up mm-hmm. to Netflix on your TV and said, damn, Dave Chappelle, he's right. pretty fucking funny. Let me check this shit out. Uh-huh. And you knew what it was. You Two, knew what right. it was. Two an hour later, be when it ends, be pissed off. Like, right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's obnoxious. You know? True. But, so and, shout out to all the comedians that are fucking not giving a fuck. Facts. That's what we need right now. Facts. We need everybody to just remove the sticks from everyone's asshole and just, you know, and be funny stones. again. place the stones. You know, be funny again. Like, be be able to be comedians again. Make America funny again. We're, Please. We're making, make comedy funny again. We're, making we're not black, even there anymore. We're, we're making black and white hats. Make make America funny again. Uh-huh. I got you. I got you. Facts. Copyright. You go. Copyright right now. I had the idea, <laughs> motherfuckers. I know how y'all get... Stealing a motherfucker idea. If you made it already, it. my bad. But if I put it on, motherfucker, <laughs> I be. I would be surprised if that's out there already. But I kind of hope it's not. Be wary, <laughs> nigga. Be wary. Yeah, for sure. For and, sure. you know, I want to tie in a little bit of, of what we're saying right now to another topic. And we're going to close with this one because we're going to hit the hour mark. But 
we experience something today, and I want to just start off with this, with a statement that I don't know if Jeff Bezos said it or the lead marketing at Amazon said it, but it ties in a little bit with the comedy, you know, like how we're saying, fuck it. If you if you're gonna be raunchy, you're gonna be, you know, disrespectful. Fuck it. At least do it on comedy. You know, Jeff Bezos said, hey, I don't give a fuck who's hacking these fire sticks and what y'all using them for. As long as y'all motherfuckers is buying them, I fucks with it. He don't give a fuck what happens. As long as you are up buying the product, who gives a fuck? And I want to tie that into right now what's going on in the, in the real estate area. Not, I'm sorry, not real estate, retail industry. And today and with South Florida, we have experienced it. You know, you know, recently we had the Walmart. I don't know if you want to say massacre or mass shooting, but it was it was definitely some lives lost and, you know, condolences to all those families that lost lives and lost loved ones over that. It's you know, it's unfair. It's a it's a it's an unjust thing. But, you know, with comedy and with all things, people try to look on the bright side and. You know, there was a young lady. I have to say this because this is actually, I try to make a joke out of it because you got to lighten the situation up. But I made a joke out of it, and it was off the backs of another performer's joke. It was, you know, it was the young lady that talked about XXX Tenton Shown that he should have had a Venmo account instead of walking around with $50,000 in his pocket. I'm saying right now, shit, to avoid a Walmart massacre... Amazon offers one day shipping, big dog. <laughs> like it's fucked up to say, but it it's really gonna drive our society later on in life. You know what I'm saying? Like the aspect of even going outside is gonna put so much fear into us that it's gonna drive us to more invest in services like Amazon, like Uber, like Lyft. You know, like you know these delivery services because we're going to be in such fear of leaving our own homes and they're going to capitalize off of it. Now, now listen, I ain't going to sit up here and preach because I'm a valid Amazon consumer user. I, I do it all with Amazon. I fucks with Amazon because they were willing to take the technology that we got available to the next level. So I'm going to definitely fuck with the technology shit. But I have to say that they're going to be capitalizing the most on our fears. Not personally. It's not personally. It's just business. It's just business, big dog. If there could be a Walmart massacre, there could be a mall massacre. If there could be a mall massacre, there could be, you know, a, a, a stadium bombing, which all these things have, have occurred throughout history. And that is striking the fear into us as a society to not even leave our homes. But guess who don't got to leave our homes to go get? Amazon. Guess what we don't got to leave our homes to go have? Grubhub, Postmates, yeah. Yeah. you know, Grizzly with the alcohol. Shout out to Grizzly. <laughs> I'm fucking with y'all. I haven't used y'all yet, but when a hurricane come around, I need my I need my bottles, dog. I need my Pretty bottles. Cool that it's available. If y'all had 24-hour service, I would really fuck with y'all. But we're going to leave that for another day. Yeah. So... What I'm trying to get to is that in the retail market and marketplace, there's a big, there's going to be a big fight. And we've kind of seen a little bit of it now with how retail is going between Amazon and Walmart. And I want to touch up a little bit on that before we get out of here. With Amazon and Walmart, you know, you've made it very obvious today that, you know, Walmart. You know, Amazon is going to really have a step up over Walmart. Oh, yeah. And how do you feel? How do you feel about that? I've become just like a fucking Amazon whore lately and just fucking ordering everything off of there. And it does make me feel bad that I'm not going to actual stores because every time I hear of a store closing, I'm like, oh, that's so fucked up. That's sad. Blah, blah. But like, here I am fucking on Amazon all day ordering crap I don't need because I can get free, you know, next day shipping, whatever. And, um,. I do think it's sad that Amazon really is taking everything over and shutting everything down slowly but surely, but um, I do think that it... We're the co-conspirators. It's kind of like, a, you know, you, 
protecting ourselves, too, from, like, you know, being possibly involved in something that could be fatal. Right. You know? Like, Dangerous. <laughs> it's like Amazon keeps us alive. Fucking kind of. Right. At this point. Right. You know, there's a fucking psycho at almost every turn these days. So, you never know, you know, these people were... You know, back to school shopping in Walmart, you know, having a normal day with their kids, looking forward to the new school year. Some of those kids didn't make it to the new school year. Some of the parents didn't make it to the new school year. You know, some parents now don't have to shop for shit on, on, you know, for back to school because they don't have a kid anymore. Right. You know, and that's that's horrible, you know, and I, I think that although, no, there are these shootings, yes, it has become somewhat of an epidemic. It's not obviously all the time. It's not every day. You know, there's more people who go shopping and don't get killed. Right. We Let's, you know, take a second to realize that, too. Right. Most people are not dying when they're going shopping. But I guess it's kind of a good safety net knowing that, you know, shopping online, you know you're going to be safe. Nothing's going to fucking happen. And people with, you know, the busy, you know, fast lifestyles that we have now in 2019, it is super convenient you know, to shop online and be able to do it, you know, when you're in bed at night or, you know, on your lunch break from work. Four in the make morning. The store. You know, whatever the case is, you have kids and, you know, you're home, you know, you're cooking them dinner, you're taking them to, you know, sports practices, you're doing all, all of this shit, you know, it really is a huge time saver and a money saver because Amazon has such great deals on everything, especially with Prime. Right. But, um, I don't know, I, I admit that I'm part of the fucking hype. And the, and we you know? we would consider the problem, but it's really an, another solution. It is, and and that's what I really want to touch on because yes, we are contributing to a billion trillion dollar industry that is that is retail, and you know Amazon's not the monster. We are the monster. We as human beings are the monster. We want our eighty inch TVs. For seventy nine ninety nine, I can't even lie. I stepped into what we have locally here called the Brands Mart, which y'all probably don't have locally where y'all at. But we got a Brands Mart, and I can't even lie, bit though. I was in that motherfucker, and I was looking at an eighty two inch TV, just cause I can. And I only looking at it. I was looking to purchase. Like I was, I was about to open up one of these motherfucking credit card lines and. No interest for 60 months or 30 months, whatever. I was about to be that motherfucker. But I had to step away because, you know what? I have to do right by my community by not contributing to the ignorance, which is you don't need that. Like, you don't need that. You can. De- I'm not going to say I'm going to take that money and always use it to a community service or a community uh, aspect. But I'm definitely going to say that I don't need... Uh, 85, 82 inch TV that has 4K high definition with Wi-Fi with streaming (laughs) like I don't need those things and I just wanted to say that because you know sometimes we lose the vision you know what I'm saying we lose the vision of what's right and what's wrong and I'm not saying Amazon's right and Walmart's wrong or Walmart's right and Amazon's wrong none of these motherfuckers is right nor wrong it's just business yeah. It's just business, and we need to take more responsibility in our purchases and our purchasing. And yes, we're always looking for the best deal. I am a culprit of that. I can't even lie. Who isn't these days, though? Right. You know? Right. You know, nobody gives eBay shit because eBay's been eBay. Real or fake, it's been eBay. I've never used eBay. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, the people have. Uh, right. right. I, I, I could get my, my... I only know how it works. I could so. get my fake Air, AirPods with $10 <laughs> on eBay free shipping you know what i'm saying so like i understand like it's business and the best business is the best business but i'm gonna say let's be a little bit more responsible in our purchasing and our purchases that let's stop buying shit we don't need Mm -hmm. let's start buying shit that we do need not just want you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and with that being said you have any last thoughts on on this walmart amazon thing no, um, shop Amazon, stay alive. <laughs> true, <laughs> true, true. And so we're going to take our, our final shot. Oh, God. We need to start putting the fireball in the freezer. It's fucking, like, room temperature. <laughs> All right. God bless and bless God. Yes. Salud. And now, ladies and gentlemen... 
we have reached inebriation. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for checking us out every week. I really do appreciate it. This is self-promoted, self-produced, man. This is all, you know, me and my team right here. We are doing this all off the cuff. This is free for y'all. You know, I, I, I hope this never becomes a paid subscription because I, I rather the real, I rather the authentic, authentic authenticity that, you know, a paid subscription won't provide. But you can definitely support us. You can definitely support us mm -hmm. at patreon.com slash the inebriated podcast. You can definitely support us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, GoPod, uh, SoundCloud. We're on SoundCloud. We're on Spreaker. We're on all these social media platforms. Come check us out every week. We're going to be filming every week. I'm going to be trying to drop this content off to you guys between, between Tuesday and really Thursday, man. It, it, it does take a lot. When it's a solo team and it's a solo mission, because we got to reach that goal. You know, it takes a team, but you know, you want it done and you want it done how you how you want. And you know, maybe I do need some help, but I'm definitely gonna be receiving a lot of support very soon. I've been talking to a lot of people. It's it's turning into a real a real good move. You know, and soon, look out for inebriated media. We are coming to you. We are gonna be bringing. A few, I would say a few short films. Um, I'm working on the script writing right now. I uh, might be going in that lane for a little bit. Still going to be doing podcasts every week just for you guys. So check us out on all social media platforms. And look out for Inebriated Media coming to you soon. Anything from you, Miss Jillian? No, that's pretty much it. Thanks for having me. I love being a part of this. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. This has been another episode of the Inebriated Podcast. Thank you for listening.